in today's class we are going to discuss the methods for preparation of niosomes most of these methods are so simple that they can be done in the laboratory so let's proceed you are looking at a list and you can see the list is quite long so rather than trying to memorize them the headings the name of the methods i think it would be better to take each one individually and discuss them that way we'll have a better impression on our mind about the method the very first method we are going to discuss is ether injection method ether is the basis of this method you know it's a volatile solvent it has got a boiling point of around 35 degree centigrade so if you allow it if you keep it in the open it will immediately vaporize so basic of this method is that you have to make a surfactant solution now lower the value more lipophilic it is so a surfactant of moderate hlb will easily be dissolved in ether now this surfactant solution is slowly introduced into the aqueous phase at 60 degree centigrade which contains the drug so naturally it's understood the drug is hydrophilic in this case at least now the boiling point of ether is 35 degree centigrade if you maintain the solution at 60 degree centigrade there will be slow evaporation and ultimately almost all the ether will evaporate that will leave the surfactants in contact with water you are looking at a diagram that explains the ether injection method this has been borrowed from a paper by mustafa ize who used the same method for entrapping his drug so the first container contains organic solvent you see there is surfactant plus cholesterol cholesterol is required when the hlb values of the surfactants are towards the hydrophilic side then to balance that over hydrophilicity cholesterol is taken so he had taken surfactant and cholesterol and this is drug solution next you see a mixture of the two the yellow dispersed in the blue so what has happened this solution and this solution are added together and shaken now the organic phase is there in the dispersed in the aqueous phase here you can see with heat the organic phase is slowly going out more the heat faster will be the evaporation but there will be a time when there won't be any organic phase in it so organic phase initially had surfactants in them now at the end of the process the surfactants are left with water at their mercy at a very high concentration level so what happened to attain stability they form vesicles 
the vesicles are not of uniform size they can be big or small luv or suv but they form vesicles and within the vesicle the liquid the aqueous liquid which contain the drug is trapped so to attain stability to make attain stability surfactants form membranes which fold over itself to take the shape of vesicles usually big vesicles are formed with suv2 means the number of suvs are less compared to the luvs the sizes of niacin obtained by this method ranges between 50 to 100 micron the next method we are going to discuss this thin film hydration technique this is a very simple method it is extensively used in indian laboratories because of the very minimal requirement of the equipments so what is done here we take a round bottom flask the ordinary ones we use in the laboratories within those round bottom flasks we take a solution of the surfactant or sometimes surfactant plus cholesterol and that is slowly rotated if the drug is hydrophobic it is added into the organic solvent that is when you make the film then only the drug is incorporated within the film if the drug is hydrophilic then it's added to the aqueous media which is to be incorporated into the neosome during hydration so the organic solvent being volatile evaporates we may take number of methods to evaporate it we may simply rotate the flask or we may use a bit of heat if it is of relatively higher boiling point but at the end of the process we are left with a thin layer attached to the surface of the flask which may or may not carry the drug sometimes we have to take cholesterol so surfactant and cholesterol and whatever organic things we are going to add lipophilic things we are going to add is dissolved in organic solvents the normal solvents are diethyl ether and chloroform so the organic solvents has to be slowly removed by hand shaking or using a rotary evaporator once the organic layer evaporates the solids will stick to the round bottom flask as a thin layer and this layer is hydrated by addition of water normally multi layered niacins are produced i had a spelling mistake here which i have corrected we may process these niacins further to get them to convert them into uh, smaller unilayered niacins or we may use them as such usually freeze thawing method will convert the multilayered niacins into the unilayered niacins but that's not mandatory it all depends upon the process it all depends upon the sorry not process it all depends upon the requirement or objective of the work the next important method that can be used in laboratory or in fact used extensively in the laboratories is sonication usually prop sonicators are used 
So under this method, normally what is done is multilamellar vesicles are converted into small unilamellar vesicles. So when you want to convert something into something else, you need to supply energy. The energy provided for this arrangement is delivered through sound waves. We can start the process using the raw materials or we can start the process with already formed multilamellar vesicles. It all depends upon the objective. When you start the process using raw materials, we will take surfactant, cholesterol along with drug solution too. But together they will be sonicated. Usually a small glass vial is used in which the surfactant and cholesterol mixture is taken. Sometimes it contains drug. As I said earlier, normally we use probe sonication. In probe sonication, sound energy is delivered directly into the solution through the probe. The tip of the probe is made of titanium. The titanium is a metal which resists corrosion. Yet there will be some wear and tear of the tip. It's quite costlier compared to the other type of sonication which is bath sonication. But it's much more efficient. So high energy is directly delivered into the solution that converts the big multilamellar vesicles into small unilamellar ones. So in our today's short discussion we have covered three methods. The ether injection method, the handshaking method and sonication. All three are simple. All three can be performed in the laboratory. All three needs simple things. The first two depends upon the evaporation of the volatile solvent and third one sonication depends on the power of the sound waves to convert one structure to another. So see you in the next video. If you are interested, you may follow me in my next video.